Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we are looking at a user mission made once again by Beckett and this user mission looks at the Russian BMP T-72 uh, or the Terminator 2 as it is nicknamed. Now if you want access to the user mission and model there will be a link in the description so you can go and download it, have a bit of fun with it and you know uh, fly about the place with this which is always nice. The BMP T-72 uh, is also an incredibly modern Russian vehicle and it's one of those uh, which uh, would be interesting to see in the game and in this video we're going to talk about its history and we're also going to talk about would it actually fit in the game as one of these modern interesting uh, vehicles which is designed for many different purposes and many different ideas. So let's get into what is this Terminator 2. So in 2013 there was a Russian arms expo. Uh, it was a defense exhibition uh, exhibition in Nizhny Tagil and the idea uh, was to show off some new vehicles to see if you know anybody wanted to purchase them even for export or anything uh, wonderful like that kind of just to show off some new designs uh, to the world and Ural Van Gonzavod if you don't know who they are they make the T-72 and also many other vehicles they unveiled a new version of the Terminator obviously we started off with the BMP T, which was the Terminator 1, and then now the BMPT uh, 72, which is a modernization attempt on the uh, T-72 chassis. So the idea was to build a new heavily armed tank support vehicle, and uh, the reason why uh, this uh, you know, came out. So the reason why this kind of existed is in the mid-90s, uh, there was the first Chechen war the Russian military went into Chechnya and of course uh, into Grozny in 1995 and what happened was they went in with tanks and they also went in with not many uh, armoured fighting vehicles and what ended up happening was a guerrilla warfare scenario where a lot of their tanks were ambushed, uh, they were attacked by infantry members in these urban areas and the tanks could not respond. So the idea was, was to try and create a vehicle that would be able to deal with these situations, that would be able to defend the tanks, have more of a focus on trying to uh, kill infantry units and also stuff around the place, so these tanks wouldn't get stuck in situations that they couldn't fight in. Tanks are not really an urban fighting machine. Uh, they really struggle in those areas. If you look at even the Iraq war and you talk to a bunch of uh, Abrams commanders when they had to flush out tanks when it came to fighting you know in towns or in cities or just let's say urban areas there is a lot of reports of Abrams commanders saying that the first of all weren't you know designed uh, for this scenario to do this and also did not like the scenario either uh, because of the fact that it's very hard to check everything that's going on and also at the same time uh, the Abrams tank itself is designed more for long range or you know mobile combat where it can engage on the move or it can gauge, engage from long range and you can't really do that in an urban environment you're kind of stuck in place unfortunately so the uh, the Russians in the form of Ural Van uh, Gonzavod uh, decided that they wanted to try and deal with this so they made the BMPT uh, and then the BMP the BMPT 70 Two. This was based obviously on the chassis of the T-72, it gives uh, new protection and also firepower especially in urban operations and uh, the idea is that the BMP T-72 is a mix between like an infantry fighting vehicle and also uh, it will be able to fight against MBTs and stuff like that. So it's a weird go-between uh, which we find uh, from this vehicle. It's, it's, it's supposed to be able to deal with everything but with a more of a ponchance uh, to dealing with infantry. It's got uh, improved uh, fire control systems, obviously uh, turret weapon station protection, all of that stuff over the first version. Remember this is an incredibly modern vehicle. We're talking about the last 10 years here so of course a lot of it is classified. But the main thing uh, that puts it apart uh, from its predecessors is the fact that uh, this was a 
way uh, that uh, your Rao van Gonsevoort put forward to be able to actually upgrade pre-existing T-72s. Because what you can do is you can take off the uh, turret of a T-72 and you can plop this new turret in. Uh, this new turret, of course, being the one that you see on screen right here. And the idea was this meant that many uh, countries which still use the T-72 could just reinvigorate their T-72s with better uh, fire control systems, better armament, and also maybe even better uh, armed packages. So this wasn't just something for the Russian army, it was also uh, for others to make a more economical option. Instead of just buying very, very expensive MBTs, maybe instead what could happen is you uh, just buy a bunch of these turrets and stick them in pre-existing vehicles. So let's talk about the armament that's on this machine. The main armament is two 30 millimeter automatic guns, the two A42s. It also has a PKTM 7.62 millimeter coaxial, and these uh, 30 millimeters are definitely tuned uh, for killing stuff such as infantry, uh, they're definitely infantry suppression, they have mainly HEFI, uh, APT, now also uh, some KE rounds, and some anti-personnel munitions, but uh, just understand these aren't really tank killing guns, these are much more designed to kill infantry units and also lightly armed uh, vehicles. The tank killing uh, comes in when we have a look at its ATGMs, it has two anti-tank guided missile launch units. They're mounted on each side of the turret and the missile which uh, is designed to be fired from this, the 9M1201, it can be equipped with two different types of warheads. So it can either have a hollow charge one uh, or a high explosive concrete piercing, uh, which sounds very fun, doesn't it? And the 30mm uh, carry around 850 rounds uh, for the uh, guns themselves and 2100 uh, uh, ammunition for the 7.62, so there's a decent amount on board, you know, nothing uh, crazy, and overall uh, four uh, anti-tank guided missiles, the attacker T's, which uh, would be incredibly fun. So yeah, it's got a little bit of anti-tank with the form of its AT gems, and AT gem technology for Russia is kind of through the roof right now. They put a lot of effort into it in the 90s and the 80s, and in the early 2000s, it is uh, kind of a amazing uh, what they've been able to do. You've got to remember the majority of MBTs and also their other vehicles such as even the BMPs and the BMDs were able and are still able to fire ATGMs so it was incredibly important for them uh, to be able to you know get it right on the ATGM front. So the other thing is the maximum distance for these ATGMs is 6,000 meters while the gun itself is around about 2,500 uh, meters against stuff like light armored vehicles but it can suppress troops at 4,000 meters which is always fun. Uh, it has also six smoke grenade launchers that are mounted on each side of the turret uh, so you can try and keep yourself alive and this is of course designed uh, to block laser attacks and all of those uh, wonderful things. If we talk about its protection, its protection uh, it's still a T-72 uh, so you know you've got the general T-72 armor but then on top of it it has a bunch of ERA. Uh, it has uh, the first thing that is added though is a bunch of armored slats uh, to the AT gem launchers. There's also a little bit on the side. Uh, they have some side ERA panels and also some uh, slats on the side of the of the turret itself. And then uh, it has a bunch of ERA on the upper glacis and then also covering the turret front and a little bit on the sides of the vehicle as well. Now obviously we don't know uh, what that ERA is, it's supposed to be some form of a pleak ERA on the sides of the hull and the turret and what this protects is a crew of three. There are three members in this, all in the hull. Uh, the turret itself uh, does not have any uh, units in it. Uh, instead, it is just an automated turret, all controlled from below. And the gunner and the commander sit at the back, and the driver, of course, at uh, the front of the vehicle. It has uh, the there's a panoramic sight. Uh, it's mounted on the front of the, for the tank commander, and the gunner position is equipped, of course, with a 360 degree 
degree day periscope as well and also uh, the idea with this extra ERA and also the applique ERA on the front is to deal with uh, not really tanks uh, but instead uh, some munitions that you'd find from infantry so stuff like RPGs and you know uh, other stuff uh, such as that so don't expect a bunch of armor uh, to be able to deal with you know uh, other MBTs instead think about you know uh, man held weapons I think is the best way to put it now obviously since this vehicle is supposed to be an upgraded T-72 you have the option to also upgrade the engine of pre-existing uh, T-72s there are two types of engines uh, which are on offer you've got an 850 horsepower engine which is of course the original engine uh, that is on uh, stuff like the T-72 nowadays or a new 1000 horsepower engine they both are 12 cell uh, V-type multi-fuel liquid cooled diesel engines, but the B92C2 uh, has itself a turbo supercharger, uh, which gives, of course, a lot of power and a lot of efficiency. And uh, this is coupled with a transmission, which has seven gears going forward, one reverse gear, so still the same issues <laughs> as the normal T72 has. And this is supposed to go 60 kilometers an hour forward uh, on road and also have a maximum range of around about 500 kilometers. This BMPT can also be fit with a bunch of attachments, including stuff like dozer blades, uh, mine, uh, mine, mine flares, and all of that wonderful stuff. So it's nice to see uh, that that is also <laughs> on board. The other thing as well is, of course, it has all the, uh, or at least has some modern APS system uh, or automatic um, uh, pass. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I can't remember the name. Uh, the anyway, uh, we'll move on. I'll remember the name in a second. Uh, it also has uh, access to an automatic fire control system as well, uh, because of course it does. It's a modern vehicle. <laughs> and the uh, other thing as well is. Uh, it also has access to pretty much everything you'd want, you know, laser range finder uh, and also access to some systems to try and keep it alive uh, when it comes to uh, all of the, you know, smoke and all of the other systems uh, which are there. APS means active protection. There we go. That's what I was trying to think of. So, yeah, it has access to active uh, protection. It all is also is supposed to have uh, thermals and, of course, night vision. So those exist exist as well and it also has a uh, it also has a separate power plant from the engine so you can power the turret if the engine is turned off and this means that you know you can technically work in what is called silent mode where you don't have to hear the engine constantly while operating the vehicle and also it means you just have an auxiliary power supply just in case anything goes wrong so overall, you can see this vehicle is pretty cool. You know, it's uh, building off an old design, trying to bring it into the new age. It's pretty much when uh, you get uh, projects like, uh, I think the M60-2000 is a good example of this, where they basically take an old M60 chassis and slap an Abrams turret on the top of it and uh, trying, you know, uh, make it anew. That's pretty much the way I see these machines. And I think uh, when we look at you know most uh, modern militaries that probably benefit from a machine like this just because it's much easier to upgrade than it is to buy a new in war thunder though what we get out of this machine is uh, just another system which would be very similar to others we have in game uh, which uh, you know it, it, would be, it would be i suppose it would be slightly different because the way i'm looking at this is i'm kind of comparing this to stuff like the baglet panzer the tam uh, you know these lighter tracked vehicles that are running around at a hell of a rate of knots and being able just to shoot their um, you know, shoot their AT gems or shoot their guns at pretty much anything that they find. But we have a bunch of vehicles already like this, uh, just in slightly different forms. The BMPs, you know, the BMP2 or the BMP3 is very similar to this and how I see its playstyle working out. Then we have, you know, other vehicles uh, like at high tiers, the Centaro 120 MGS, which is just getting added. You know, that's a top tier tank destroyer. This thing would be kind of a top tier well everything destroyer but also maybe a scout on top of it you know the type 16s running around people have talked about the striker being in game why could we not have this machine as well alongside them the other thing is 
obviously one of the main, one of the only problems with this is having an unmanned turret means that you can kind of sit behind rocks and just kind of keep shooting stuff like the M901 can until you get hurt and then of course you just repair and then do the same thing again so I'm still very wary of that happening because I know uh, on a lot of maps the M901 is really annoying to deal with because you can just sit behind something and just wait for the enemy to push and then you just shoot them over over that a great example of this is on cargo ports there are like log piles uh, in certain places for the m901 you can just sit the m901 behind it and then what you can do is shoot over it so you technically can't kill that thing unless you know it's artillery strike and i feel like that would be the only problem i would have with the terminator 2 i'd have to give it some form of hull break uh, when it came to its turrets otherwise it would be really really annoying to deal with but overall, uh, with the push to more modern vehicles uh, that we've seen in the game, I don't see why the BMP uh, T-72 or even the BMPT should be excluded from this. If we are going to go ultra modern, or you know, today, which is pretty much where everything is ending up, why not? Let's see it in game, let's have a bit of fun with it, and let's enjoy it. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I just want to thank Ambrosius McClellan, B. Young, Blackie, Chris Giltnane, Daniel Stanton, J. Wilt, John Ryman, Martinez, Super Cacti, Trigger Hippie, Eugene Terry, and also Elove Goat and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.